Welcome to the world headquarters of the Mass Creature, broadcasting from somewhere partially underground on this continent. And tonight I'm the Mass Creature without my mask. I entitled my teaching tonight, God's Will in Hard Times. Ephesians 5, 15-17. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. <clears throat> See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. This book, Ephesians, is written to uh, the church in the city of Ephesus. And when you came by ship into the harbor, at the head was the great temple of Diana, or Artemis. And I picture it like coming into America and seeing the Statue of Liberty. And you're coming in, and you see this statue. Wow, this is so cool. This is so neat. And so this statue was a representation of the city. Some comments about it, it was a, an important city in the Roman province of Asia. Uh, it was a bridgehead between the east and the west. It was at the end of a great caravan trade route. It had magnificent streets paved with marble and it had baths and libraries and the marketplace. To me, <coughs> I would say that this city was maybe some of the, uh, I don't know, maybe Calcutta or something like that. And it was a huge, it was just all kinds of stuff was going on. It's, it's funny um, about these cities too. Um, there's just all <clears throat> this kinds of stuff going on. And, I don't like this comment here. I'm making a change on the fly here. I'm going to mention this later. So we have this <clears throat> in Acts 19. It goes into a story of what was going on with Paul in, in the city of Ephesus. How these religious people wanted to um, kill people who didn't agree with them. And it's funny about the word... Uh, tolerance getting thrown around. We, we can tolerate um, certain people, certain people we can't. And sometimes the people who scream the loudest tolerance are the most intolerant. I was in a, a world religions class and um, I, I remember um, telling uh, the teacher uh, in, in high school there and different people from different religions would come in, but when a Christian came in, uh, he would really be mad at him, presenting the Bible as God's Word. And I said, you know, you're so, um, what was the word? You know, you wouldn't even consider the possibility that there's only one way. You're so, I didn't use the word intolerant, uh, but you say that you're all open-minded and everything, but you're not open-minded to the part that there might only be one way. And so Acts chapter 19 talks about the persecution there, um, which is the background for the book of Ephesians. In Ephesians 6, 12 and in Daniel 10, 13, we have a picture of spiritual warfare as far as demons that are over territories and, and areas. I've heard the book of Ephesians called the Joshua of the New Testament, the book a victory. Joshua went into the promised land, he conquered, and Ephesians is the book of conquest. Yet, these people, um, Christians, did not have the background that the church at Jerusalem had. But yet, this is the book of victory. If I was going to Mars as a missionary, and I can only have a part of the Bible. I can only have one book because of weight limits. I would take the book of Ephesians. And um, 
I believe that it, this is a great foundation for starting a church, going into a community. And, you know, it deals with the family. It deals with so many different things. It deals with spiritual warfare and in the armor of God. It talks about being a grown-up in the Lord Jesus Christ. But my focus tonight is the topic of God's will. Now, there's been a virus going around, and I haven't heard it too much up here in the city of uh, where the world headquarters of the Mass Preacher is, but where I used to live, this virus went like this. Well, God really doesn't care as long as you're a nice person, you're just doing a nice thing, it doesn't matter what you do. And I've been challenged by people, well, how do you know God's will, and um, really strange things uh, attacking me for praying for God's will. It doesn't matter what you do, just be a nice person. And, and you can't get that from these verses. And I, I've challenged people, give me a theological position from the scriptures of why it doesn't matter what you do. And as we're going to look at these verses a little bit closer, there is a word, the, the, the stem word for, the uh, root word for um, faith is pistis, believe, believeth is pistool. Um, in um, Ephesians, these, these words are used several times. And that, that word, pistool, pistis, means absolutely no doubt. When you see in the English Bible the word faith, or the word believe or believeth, absolutely no doubt. If you absolutely no doubt believe Ephesians, 5, 15 through 17, you will cure yourself of that virus that has infected the church. Let's start with looking at verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. The Greek word here that in my King James is translated circumspectly is akribos. And um, I like, you know, some of the, I like circumspectly. Because circumspectly has a punch. I mean, if I tell you, I want you to walk circumspectly. I mean, it just kind of grabs a hold of you, even though that's an older form of this word. Uh, the modern words is carefully, accurately, um, responsibly to walk. A commentary on acribos, cautiously, worriedly, carefully, considerately, discreetly, prudently, carefully considering all circumstances before acting, judging, or deciding. I'm writing again. I just had a thought and I want to include it the next time I do this. Um, years, decades ago, I used to have a, be in a class for working on a private pilot's license and flying and I never finished it, and never got it, and a um, long time ago, but I learned about the walk around of a plane, which is so contrary to a walk around on a car. Now, when I go out to my car, I just unlock it, take the steering wheel club, the foot club off, and, and I go. You know, I don't do no walk around, I don't check the tire, I don't check the oil. But in a plane, boy, all the things you got to do on the list, there's a list of things in a chart, you're just marking them off, go around checking all the different things. And it's a more serious procedure. And I believe as we're praying for decisions in life, what God is saying to us, and what is on my heart, this picture of the walk around, is we need to be more of a walk around like a plane. 
before we move, before we date somebody, before we go somewhere, before a church we attend, before the job we take, and what we do in our job, that we're analyzing and processing it, and asking God, okay, Lord, be with me, partner with me, move on my life. And this phrase, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. You know, we've all seen warning labels. I mean, I got a space heater not too long ago. It started before winter started. And it had page after page of symbols and warnings and warnings and warnings. And this is a warning label. Paul is giving us a warning label. Don't be a fool. <laughs> That's what he's telling us. That ye walk. Or lifestyle. I'm a health food nut. Um, I used to be a vegetarian. I'm not anymore. Um, and I, and when, when I go to work and when I um, around friends and relatives and, and people remark, they see my lifestyle. They remark how I eat. Well, you, how come you don't eat desserts? How come this? Or how come that? Sometimes I get criticized, and sometimes I get commanded. But there's a lifestyle in, in how I, I, I live and eat and how I handle myself. And that's what I believe Paul is saying. And this great book, the book of conquest, the book of victory, in the middle of this thing here, he's telling us about God's will and how to be careful in God's will. This whole thing fits together. And when you have time, you should read, read it. Read the book of Ephesians uh, five times in a row. Just read it and read it and get these ideas floating in your head. And then go slow through the book of Ephesians. And later on I'll be having a book giving more commentary going through here. I'm writing a commentary now about on the book of Ephesians. And maybe a few years. I don't know when I'll have it done. But... Um, my commentary done, but at least Ephesians, we'll see when that gets done, but I'll, I'll maybe put a version of it on YouTube. But, so we're to be careful. And you know, I've had people make fun of me for praying about God's will, which seems dumb. But, back to the airplane example, okay? Um, you know, I don't know anybody that doesn't walk around with their car. But, airplane, you would be freaked out if you came up to that airplane and you, the pilot just said, ah, oh, just get in and go. It doesn't matter. It just, just start it up. No, you'd say, dude, I'm on there. My tail is on there, man. You do your walk around. But yet in our lives, we're so careless so many times. And it's not a burden. It's, it's an attitude. It's a way of heart. And you know, um, Okay, let's move on. Not as fools, but as wise. The great Apostle Paul, in this book of victory, is contrasting what to do and what not to do. The word fools is the Greek word as alphas. Unwise, destitute, one commentary says, of Christian wisdom. Now the word for wisdom here is sophos, um, endued with spiritual and practical wisdom. Now, in this contrast, let me tell you a story. You get to a church dinner and the pastor pulls out a big turd out of the toilet, and you have this beautiful salad spread out there, and food spread, and he slams it up in there on the plate. Now, if you're a, a fool, you'll just go ahead and start eating that salad with the big turd. If you reject and say, you know what, dude, dude, 
I cannot, I am not down with that. <coughs> then you are wise. And how many times in churches do pastors dish that out dirt? <coughs> and people just chomp down on it and send an offering for a thousand dollars. Sorry. Verse 16. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Or taking advantage of opportunities. To buy up for oneself or one's advantage. Metaphorically, it means to make wise and sacred use of every opportunity for doing good. And he sandwiches in between the two warning labels that God's going to present. There's going to be times for you to take advantage of opportunity. And he wants you to step out. And there's a balance. And all my messages are try to balance it out. To be cautious, but then there's a time to step out. Uh, before I moved to the City of the World headquarters, there was a, I, I was at a, a men's group and we were studying a, a book about the first in the Old Testament about jumping in, uh, a great man, a guy jumping into a, a pit, you know, fighting a lion on a snowy day. And the funny thing about that verse is that I told the class, you know, as I started the book, and I was thinking about moving to the world city where the world headquarters is a mass preacher. It's like, forget the lion in the pit. I'm afraid of the snow. But it was a really neat book about just stepping out in faith. So this is a very balanced portion of scripture here. Quite recently, a week or two ago, I'm driving towards a certain shopping center, and I don't go there that much anymore. I used to hang out at the library there when I wasn't working, and um, but now that I am, <laughs> I don't have the time. And so there's a there's a thrift store there, and you know, some of the prices are okay, and some of them aren't very okay, kind of expensive. And, so it's kind of feast of famine there, and I just felt impressed to go inside. So I'm walking around, and <clears throat> there is a commentary set in the bookcase for a very reasonable price, a very cheap price. And um, I bought it, and um, I had a couple of the set of that commentary set. I had a couple of volumes, but. I picked up the rest of the set, now I got a couple extras to give out. And it was obedience. The Holy Spirit was putting out my heart, deal with me, you know, you need to go here. I know you know it's not really the place you hang out anymore, dealing with me to do this. And it was an opportunity. And I saw those books and instantly I knew I'm, I'm snagging this guy. And that's what taking advantage of opportunities is. God lays things in your heart. He wants you to be careful. He wants you to analyze. He wants you to study. He wants you to pray. He wants you to fast. But He wants you to go. Two. Now, the last verse here, verse 17. There was a pastor I had who used to say, Why is the wherefore there for? Why is the wherefore, therefore? So wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. This word for unwise is aphron, aphronis. Um, the commentary on this Greek word, um, without reason, want of mental sanity and sobriety, a reckless and inconsiderate habit of mind the lack of common sense, perception of the reality of things, natural and spiritual. He's dense. They're dense. Without reason, senseless, foolish, stupid, without reflection or intelligence, acting rationally. Now let's look at the word understanding. <clears throat> it's the Greek word, um, so E A M E so E A M E. I'm getting the ending wrong, but I'm close. To perceive the commentary on this word, 
to have insight, to grasp, to see with the mind and comprehend. The days are evil and full of all sorts of evil. The believer must understand what God's will is in order to conquer evil. If he does not, then he is a fool and acting unwisely. In April 2010, I was visiting the city where the world headquarters of the mass preacher is attending a holistic health fair and when I was <clears throat> was there in the city um, I just felt like the Holy Ghost put me in a headlock and, and deal with me to get out here and I had been thinking for 20 years about coming out here and I never did but I finally I visited, but I'd never moved out here. I even turned down a job offer. At this, at this point in time, it was very clear to me, my understanding, that I needed to be out here. God wants us to be successful and to navigate in these times and to do what He has called us to do. Proverbs 3 I'm going to turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Okay. Okay, Proverbs chapter 3. Let's read <clears throat> verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. In closing, the man whose ministry I was saved under <clears throat> said one of the most profound things I ever heard. The whole purpose of life, the whole reason of life, is for us to turn our will over to God. If you read from Genesis through Revelation, it's the, the debate about man wanting to do his own thing. And <clears throat> some people obey God and some people don't. And that's the whole purpose, the summary of the scriptures is, is that. For us to turn our will over to God. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, just help us to understand your will. Deal with our heart. Give us a sense and a feeling. And speak to each person watching this that they do what they're supposed to do. That you would speak to their spirit. If it's a need to get born again, if it's a need to change churches, if it's a need to stay, whatever it is, Lord, each of us individually, Lord, we can come to you as the high priest. We can come to you that you will put on our heart and make your will known. In Jesus' name. Signing off from somewhere partially underground, the mass preacher bids you good night.